Hey guys, Wally Renee here, and I'm going to be showing you how to measure condylar inclination on your skull scans for the purposes of entering into uh, virtual articulator software. So the first thing to notice is I do have a full skull scan here on a Pro Max Max um, ultra low dose protocols with about 32 microsieverts of effective dose to the patient here, which is um, super low for this quality of a scan for a full skull. Basically, we're going to pick the inferior border of the orbit and the superior border of the external auditory meatus here to drop a Frankfurt horizontal plane um, using the kind of the drop a line tool in Romax's software. And so here it is here, and I just changed it to yellow. Now I'm going to uh, focus in on the condyle here and the um, glenoid fossa and the articular eminence. So I'm going to drop another line from the crest of the articular eminence to the crest of the glenoid fossa, like that, right about midpoint of the condyle um, is the slice view there. So then you get this angle, and the condylar inclination is the angle um, that we just drew in relation to the Frankfurt horizontal plane. So I'm going to go ahead and measure this angle in Romexis here to get the patient, this patient's true condylar inclination, which is 33.1 about there. So we'll go ahead and save that. And then we'll basically repeat the same steps on the contralateral side. So we'll go to the patient's right side now and, and uh, do it real quick here. I'll just show you. I'm just zooming in here. You do have the alter the tilt of the patient here in order to be able to get the external auditory meatus, the inferior border of the orbit, and the condyle in a perfect plane uh, cross-sectional view here. So here we go and um, measured right here. Let's see where we're at, 34. Okay, so, you know, most people fall around the 35 mark or, you know, between 30 and 38, but there's sometimes I do this and it's like 60 um, and it's just people's anatomy. Now I'm going to export this whole thing as an STL file, um, export the volume as STL, adjust the threshold and bring it into PlanCAD Premium here, which is ExoCAD. Now I could have merged the models in Romexis. In fact, Romexis does a much better job at merging uh, models to uh, DICOM data sets than uh, ExoCAD does, but I, I just forgot to do it. So I'm just merging the intraoral scans that were taken at uh, basically an MIP with the skull scan STL, and I'm virtually mounting it on the articulator now using the patient's um, basically the, the articular eminence here is going to line up with the rotation axis of the virtual articulator perfectly so that we have a proper mounting rather than using just averages. Um, we are adjusting here based off of this patient's specific anatomy and spending our time here to make sure that we get a good mounting. And now we're going to go and adjust the um, condylar inclination uh, to the patient's specific numbers and it does actually dramatically change things. And we're going to open the vertical dimension here, open the pin up to make room for the occlusal guard that we're going to be 3D printing out of Keystone Soft here in a minute. So going through the guidance movements um, now, as you can see here, we have just a tiny bit of room there for our occlusal guard. Um, this patient has severe issues with their occlusion, and we're just trying to work things out for them. So we're just opening that up a little bit more to give us some more room. So here we are with the occlusal guard design. We have um, anterior guidance with posterior disclusion during lateral extru uh, extrusive movements. We also have cuspid rise with posterior disclusion. A little heavy right here, so I'm just going to go ahead and buff that down real quick um, on this cuspid right here, this ramp. So we can get that posterior disclusion, but still not have it riding too heavy there. Perfect. Awesome. So let's uh, go ahead and we'll 3D print this thing out of Keystone Soft here. Um, let's see what we got there. There's the final printed product. Going into the cure box, there it is fitting in the patient's mouth. There's the uh, occlusal marks exactly where we had them in the software, and here's the patient going through excursive movements. And once again, you can see this is just a phenomenal uh, service for your patients. This is the first time I've ever felt excited about 3D printed uh, occlusal guards versus milled is with this, this new material. So um, I hope this helps somebody do some sweet occlusal guards.